Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys, full-time trader and technical analyst. After the big dump yesterday, we found a bit of balance in the market today with both sides checking things out in our new price range. What does that mean going forward in the short term? We're going to check in on a bunch of different things. Tesla, cannabis stocks, crypto stocks, the dollar and metals, and of course the major indices. So as we know, yesterday the bears had a big win to start the week. And again, it's all of our major sectors hitting the low of the day at the same time. XLF, XLV, QQQ. If you go back and look at how many times did that happen on the melt up run, it happened a couple of times. If you look at how many times it's happened in the last three days, two times. Things have drastically shifted in how the market and how these sectors are interacting with each other, leading to this weekly consolidation. We also, of course, had SPY with 12 weekly stair steps in a row, only a few times in the history of the market where it went up more than that in a straight line. Not surprising at all to see this pullback. What I want to know from here, a number of things. Number one, do we hold weekly EMA 12? Look back here. This was a similar melt-up run, not quite to the same extent. 21% in 19 weeks versus 29% in similar weeks, a couple, couple off, but similar. We pulled back, we lost weekly EMA 12. It created the space for a lower high. We confirmed the weekly downtrend into multiple months of consolidation. That's what I'm looking at now. Do we lose weekly EMA 12? Do we set a weekly lower high next bounce? Do we confirm a weekly downtrend for more pullback on the monthly chart? We know the monthly charts, a higher low is the most likely scenario. Whether we set that higher low with bears failing a confirmed weekly downtrend or gaining a confirmed weekly downtrend is going to drastically shift what this monthly consolidation looks like. And this is the same for both SPY and the NASDAQ, QQQ. They look a little bit different, but the concept is going to be the same. So if I'm a bear, I want to see as much of a pullback as possible before a weekly bounce to ensure that that weekly lower high is the most likely scenario. And we also have to keep in mind at this point for a bull flag to form, I should say, <clears throat> we can pull back. Let's look at our wrong button here. Retracement size. So we can drop down to 479 and still be at 382 retracement for the potential of a monthly bull flag, which means the market can drop, or I should say SPY can drop another, my magnet's throwing me off here. SPY can drop another 4% plus and still be a possible monthly bull flag. So one day at a time as always, the bears have full short-term control, but just remembering, you know, it's it's the tale of two time frames. We're in a monthly and weekly uptrend. We're in a daily and an hourly downtrend. Bears own the short term, bulls own the long term. Our bulls going to regain the short term and keep the long term looking real good. Our bears going to control the short term for a prolonged period of time to start taking over the long term. That's what we're going to be looking for on a daily basis for the rest of April through earnings season, which is already underway. We got Netflix later this week. We got Tesla Tuesday of next week. So uh, it's, it's a, an important juncture in the market, gauging what consolidation looks like. As far as the short term, yesterday we had the big dump and today was really just finding balance, a new range. We were fairly range bound, certainly in the NASDAQ before the dump. And the big win to start the week was taking out this Thursday previous dump low. So we were trading sideways for a couple of weeks. We break bear. We're now in a new range. And this is essentially just bulls and bears poking at each other, saying, you know, where's the supply and where's the demand and establishing a new range. We had the, the bounce resistance from end of yesterday. We had the overnight low. And if you look at the low of yesterday and the overnight low, we dipped and bounced, 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 bounced. And as far as resistance, reject, 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 just get over, reject. It's essentially just right now, this is the market telling us we have, you know, fair balance of supply and demand with this new range. And that's likely going to break tomorrow. We're either going to turn this resistance into support and start a daily bounce, or we're going to turn this support into resistance and see another leg down. So today didn't really give us much information. If you're a bear, you're liking today because you broke through supports, you, you followed through for the bears, and there was no meaningful bounce today. So overall, if I had to choose who won the day, I would say bears won the day, but tomorrow is going to dictate uh, the short term on this new balance range. And this is you know overlapping my style of technical analysis with Lamont, who does volume profile 
which is uh, a lot of similarities to what I just talked about. But if we do get a bull break, we'll be looking for, I'm gonna be looking for previous support to be acting as resistance. This is the NASDAQ futures chart. And look at how many times, it's the wrong level. Look at how many times this support zone held. So I'm looking at essentially all this, where we held all this action, held, held, and then lost it. And so if we bounce and do get a bull break tomorrow, I'll be watching for the possibility that we set a daily lower high, potentially back testing and rejecting that zone. And the EMAs will also be up there as well. So we know a daily lower high is the most likely result of the next bounce. The question will be how much bounce retracement do we see? But only if the resistant zone, the very clear resistance zone from today turns into support. We had some volatility with Powell speaking, Powell saying inflation, not really where we want it. The market is pricing in, oh, maybe we're not going to get a bunch of rate cuts this year. Here's a Powell dump into a bounce, just a lot of volatility to remain range bound. And again, SPY, same thing. Poking and prodding at this support and resistance and not really getting anywhere. As far as the next support level, there's a lot of gaps to be watching. There's a gap fill on SPY at 495.83, and that's a level to watch if we break 501.46. We can see there's not a lot of price action within there. So bears are hoping for another leg down to start exploring this gap fill. We'll be watching for daily oversold conditions, keeping in mind that we did hit daily oversold twice, but that helped identify a monthly high or low way back when. In the strongest uptrends, daily oversold will mark a monthly high or low. But again, just one day at a time for me. As far as QQQ, our next support level, if we do, do get another leg down, again, a lot of space here with the gap. I mean, we're already filling the gap. We don't have much until 425.14. So over the last two weeks, three weeks, the bears have been checking off everything they want to see. All major sectors hitting the low at the same time. Spy stair step, bear break on the weekly time frame, And... You know, NASDAQ breaking the low of two Thursdays ago, that dump low. The next check mark that bears want to see is the semiconductors, SMH, breaking this weekly support. That would technically be confirming a little weekly downtrend. That would be a higher low, quick lower high, and then a quick little downtrend into monthly consolidation. And so that is something the bears want to see from here to 1282. It's still 2% plus from where we stand, about 3% from where we stand. Daily inside bar today, semiconductors were definitely one of the bounce leaders. And so again, now we're watching, you know, we know the semiconductors have a major impact on the NASDAQ. If we get this leg down, the NASDAQ's gonna be working on that gap fill. If we hold this support, we know the NASDAQ is not likely going to see too much further downside in the short term. So I do wanna keep an eye on SMH here to see how it breaks this tightening range. Tesla is all bears. I made a, a long attempt, a swing att attempt at an entry of 171. And my, my original game plan was just stick a stop under 160 and let it play out. That's either the bottom or I'm wrong. But because we had earnings closing in, if I'm holding a swing position through earnings, I have to have a lot of profit cushion. And knowing that, okay, we got six trading days until earnings, my mindset shifted and my stop loss shifted to say, okay, well, if this is not the daily high or low to confirm a trend change, I'm not going to get enough profit cushion to hold through earnings. So I just moved my stop up to 167.99 and stopped out quickly yesterday and prevented a whole lot further downside. And it ended up being a you know less than 2% loss, which on a swing position is, is nothing. So I adjusted my game plan based on uh, earnings approaching and in this instance, it saved me uh, some losses. But it's all bears in Tesla. And again, we're still going to look for a three-month higher low compared to 101, but we can drop another 20, 30% and still form that long-term higher low. So, you know, I'm just hands off for Tesla right now. We'll see what earnings does. But overall, easily a lead bear. I can't tell you how many times this year We've had all the semiconductors, all my NASDAQ big tech names green, and Apple and Tesla red. 
it's been a very distinct shift in correlations with both Apple and Tesla and how they trade relative to the NASDAQ. You know, there was a time period where Tesla would do exactly what the NASDAQ did, but just magnified in terms of more volatile in both directions. And that those days are long gone. And Apple as well, 2024, after, you know, eight years of staring at Apple in the broader market, 2024, I would say, is the most disconnected. I've seen SPY and QQQ from Apple's price action on a day-to-day basis. And so those are just some macro shifts that are going on. But overall, you know, new resistance, we can say Tesla, if, if 179.22 is resistance, not much is changing. And bulls need help from earnings. A lot of negative headlines in Tesla these days. Financial sector, all bears into its start of the earnings season. It started last Friday. And you can see these just, you know, we've closed lower than the open now six days in a row. We're approaching daily oversold conditions, which we have not seen since the melt-up began. Straight up move, big pullback, monthly consolidation underway. We are absolutely going to scout a monthly high or low as most likely, but no sign of it right now with the bears still in full control in a week close. So I will be keeping an eye out for the possibility of a daily oversold bounce. I mean, technically, this, these are our back burners on the daily time frame. If you run straight up for months, and if a monthly high or low is the most likely scenario, and you're hitting daily oversold, it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for a bounce. And my trading style would be, you know, ideally, I'd want to try on a gap down open day, I'd want to, you know, position for a bit of a bounce, I would want to sell partial into a, a short-term bounce, and I would want to stick a break-even stop to make an attempt at a monthly higher low. But we'll see if I get a setup that I like. We still need another leg down to get to daily oversold. There's a gap to fill at 39.49, and then another down at 38.98. But definitely beat up on earnings. JPM had a big drop on earnings. Same thing. I mean, it's Yes, it's an earnings reaction, but this name went straight up for five months and it went up 100% from the October lows, October 22. So let's see how the bulls respond. You can see last time we hit daily oversold was the best time to buy. We'll see if that happens again. Definitely makes me more interested. You know, I've been, I've been a little hands-off recently and that's just because, you know, I, I hedged my IRA long exposure. As soon as I saw all major sectors hit low at the same time for the first time in a while, back a couple of weeks ago, I hedge up and now I'm just letting that play out. And if we get to daily oversold or close to it, I'm going to take my hedges off and uh, look to then maybe reload a daily lower high. But that's often how I protect my portfolio a bit and then exit you know, sometimes I'll, I'll take protection and exit my hedges when we see another leg up. But other times I will exit my hedges into the weakness. And IWM is close to getting there. I have a, a small bear IWM position. And it's been a lead bear as well. Today that daily RSI got down into the low 30s. And so on the verge of sizing down my bear IWM exposure. It was a nice rising wedge. I don't like that line, but bull break, straight into consolidation, bull break, straight into a pullback, losing weekly EMA 12 for the first time in months. Tons of space for a daily lower high. A decent bounce today, and we did technically confirm the hourly uptrend, but we need to break the high of today tomorrow. We're in a five-day stair-step drop, so bulls still certainly have proving to do there. Cannabis names, Again, this is why in the, in the sector videos, I kept saying, you know, you do not want to be a bag holder, play the momentum while it's there, tight stop losses. When these names top out, we can very easily pull back 50%. At this point, CGC has pulled back 43% from its high. And again, it's always easier in hindsight, but it's just so glaringly showed us when momentum was gone. Bull move, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower high, Confirm daily downtrend at 8.93. As soon as 8.93 breaks, we confirm a daily downtrend. We could say things are different. Things are shifting. And from that point, we then dropped in the next few days, 
So five days since that level has broken, and we saw a pullback of 26% from that signal. It's now a daily stair step drop with a lower high every day, six days in a row. We will be looking for a weekly high or low, keeping an eye on this back test of the EMAs, but I have no interest going long in this name. And yeah, I have no interest. Maybe on a daily stair step, but I need volume to return. You can see the volume's gone as well. This is, you know, this name got used and abused by the bulls. High volume, high opportunity, high volatility, significant trading opportunity, and it's just gone now. And it may return, but I'm not counting on it returning because historically we can go back and look at plenty of examples where the bulls have their fun, squeeze the shorts, and then that's it. ACB, same deal. Hasn't pulled back quite as much, but it did just confirm a daily downtrend. We will be watching for a weekly high or low, but you know, 36% pullback or whatever it's been. And just an hourly downtrend guide. Look at all this resistance. Look how many times the bear said, nope. 745, 744, 743, 737. 20% drop from that point. More than that, but you get the idea. So momentum gone for now. We are scouting weekly higher lows. The broader market is definitely impacting the sector. And of course, we're watching for any headlines, but no headlines to be seen. MSOS, weak as well. Trying to get a daily bounce going, struggling at nine psychological. We're watching for a weekly higher low here as well, but retracement size of 60% plus. We've got space for a daily lower high next bounce. We've got space for a weekly lower high next bounce. The sector desperately needs a headline. Without a headline, it's definitely subject to the risk on, risk off mindset of the market. And IWM is showing us the last three weeks that the market is clearly going risk off the last three weeks after euphoria. We were in euphoria, right? Straight up 12 weeks of stair step. People forget euphoria. We know how euphoria ends. People, oh yeah, we can drop. I forgot what it's like for a position to go down 5% in a few days. Cannabis, no, crypto stocks. So we've been talking about the relative weakness in crypto stocks to Bitcoin for months and suggesting big money is shorting these names to hedge their long exposure. And now that Bitcoin is seeing weakness as the markets in general go risk off, and Bitcoin, in my opinion, is just a leveraged version of the NASDAQ. I haven't seen anything that tells me that Bitcoin is independently trading from the market risk on, risk off mindset. But that aside, clearly these names are very weak, Riot, You know, I was talking about how Bitcoin is 40% higher here than it was here. And we're not breaking resistance. That's a huge red flag. And now we have rolled over 60% drop, hitting the lowest level in years. It's just free fall. Yeah, there'll be an oversold bounce on the daily, but I'm not playing against this momentum and trying to play a bounce. The four hour RSI is absolutely trashed, probably nearing historical bounce levels. But uh, again, when I see such clearly defined relative strength or weakness, I do not want to fight that. It's tempting, right? Oh, we're due for a bounce. We're really beat up. I love bounces, but I know probabilities don't favor me nailing a bottom on something this week. So Riot is all bears, daily stair step six days in a row. And same for MARA, not quite as weak, but definitely very weak. 1462 broke to get us the lowest level of the year. CLSK had dilution news that took it out of its relative strength. It broke to its lowest level in a couple of months. So CLSK is still the strongest overall, but again, these names losing momentum over the last couple months for many of them, but CLSK the last three weeks, aligning with that IWM, three weeks of risk off. The dollar is all bull, five days straight up. Broader market bulls and crypto and metal bulls were all hoping that this was going to be a four-month long-term lower high and lower low. It was a weak candle, but bull saved it. Still watching for a tightening range here. I'm still going to be watching for something like this, which could take us into 2025 easily. But 
we could say that the bulls are in full control of the dollar and there's a lot of space for a daily high or low. That said, gold and silver bulls are very pleased with how they are trading considering the dollar is so strong. But this dollar strength, again, it's not a coincidence that you know this huge green week, the biggest green week in a bunch of months is part of risk off in crypto, in cannabis, in the Russell 2000. And so this is a pretty important zone approaching. Oops. Resistant zone in the dollar is approaching. And going to be paying attention to how we react to that. But the metals go a little bit of a blow off top last Friday, but nice recovery. If you hold daily EMA 12, you don't have anything to worry about. So big reversal candle into a bounce, but you know, same thing. If we do this, we know things are shifting. So now that's a new, you know, if I wanted a tight stop on my metal position or gold itself, you know, that's my new, well, there's two levels there. I would default to the lower level because it's pretty much the same thing. I'd put my stop under there. Silver, much weaker today. So silver might be giving us a little bit of a tell. Is silver about to break that low and confirm that quick little downtrend into weekly consolidation? We can go to the 12 hour. It's a 12 hour equilibrium. I was really hoping for a 12 hour higher low, really hoping the dollar starts daily consolidation to help that form. And the miners, Bit of a bigger pullback. There is space for a daily lower high to be the result of this bounce. And we'll see if the miners confirm a daily downtrend as a result of the next daily bounce. Oil, overall daily, hanging on, daily EMA 12. If we do lose it, we'll zoom out and look for a weekly higher low with lots of space. Again, bigger picture, I am watching for a monthly lower high and a tightening range, but it's gonna require a daily downtrend. It's gonna require losing the weekly uptrend losing weekly EMA 12, so it's not anywhere near shaping up. I just know that that's something I'm watching for over the next month or two. But overall, oil bull still hanging on just fine for now. A little bit of a double top, but the bear break of short-term support didn't result in any follow-through. So that's keeping the bulls hopeful for a weekly bull flag. So again, overall, determine what time frame is most important to you. Do you care about the weekly high or low or a monthly high or low? Or do you care about the daily lower high or the hourly lower high? You can be short-term trading bearish while keeping in the back of your mind, I know I'm scouting some longer-term higher lows. That's a little bit more tricky because those mindsets can often overlap and lead to mistakes. But uh, my mindset is you know, keeping an eye out for a point where I want to take some hedge off and look for these weekly higher lows. I won't be going aggressively bullish. I'll just be going you know, back to my positions that are unprotected if we get some signs from the bulls that uh, turnaround is coming. But again, no, no signs of that right now. And we'll see how these sideways balancing ranges from today break tomorrow. Hope you're well, do good things. Here's some deer.